Okay, in this video, we're going to do an epsilon delta proof um, that the limit as x approaches 2 of the quantity x squared plus 3x minus 9 is equal to 1. So that's going to be a quadratic. So this one's kind of interesting if you've only done linear um, proofs. Uh, there's kind of an extra step, which is really like a whole extra concept that you have to deal with in these. So there's a, a couple of things you need to know. So this is the stuff you need to know. First of all, uh, you've got to know that the absolute value of a times b is equal to the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. So we're going to use that um, definitely when we do these sorts of proofs. The next thing is um, we want only the absolute value of x minus c when we're manipulating the epsilon um, inequality. And so anything else we'll have to find some sort of bound for. And you'll see that happen as we do the problem. But the question is always like, how do you find that bound? And so the way you do it typically is we usually just say like, what if delta equaled one? Like what would happen then? And then we know that delta will end up less than one. And so it just puts a bound on what can happen and lets you take an, an expression and turn it into a constant and things are just way easier to work with. So let's take a look at the problem and you'll see that in action. So we're gonna to try to prove that the limit as x approaches two of the quantity x squared plus three x minus nine is equal to one. So we're going to write down our two absolute value inequalities that we have to work with. So we have the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. That's the one we're going to manipulate. And we try to manipulate it so that it looks like the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta. So let's rewrite those in the context of this problem. So f of x is x squared plus 3x minus 9. l is 1. So we want the absolute value of x squared plus 3x minus 9 minus 1 to be less than epsilon. That's our first one. And then we also have the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than delta. So that's our target. We want to turn the epsilon inequality essentially into the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than something. And then that thing we'll choose as delta. So on the left-hand side of our epsilon inequality, we can just do some algebra. We get x squared plus 3x minus 10 is less than epsilon. Uh, so that's always going to factor pretty much when you do these problems. So we factor it into um, the absolute value of x plus 5, x minus 2 is less than epsilon. Uh, and now we need to think about what's happening, right? Because we can use that property, which will be the absolute value of x plus 5 times the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon. So the x minus 2 is good because that's our target. The absolute value of x plus 5 is a weird thing because we don't want that. Um, we want to just get the absolute value of x minus 2. So what we do here is we say, well, we have to be really, really close to 2, right? Like that's the whole idea. We're taking the limit as x approaches 2. So maybe um, we're within one unit of 2, right? So maybe delta is just 1. So we say if delta equals 1, and then we look at what happens. So if delta is equal to 1, this is like an upper bound on delta, really, um, then the absolute value of x minus 2 would be less than 1, which means that x minus 2 would be between negative 1 and 1. If I add 2 to both sides, I get that um, the, just the x is between uh, 1 and 3. So then um, if that's the case, then if I add 5 to all three parts of that inequality, I get that 6 is less than x plus 5 is less than 8. And that means that x plus 5 is less than 8. So if x plus 5 is less than 8, then the absolute value of x plus 5 is less than 8 because um, we're between 6 and 8. So this is something that we could substitute for the absolute value of x plus 5. We could say that that quantity is just less than 8 because on the interval from, um, you know, from 1 to 3, x plus 5 is somewhere between 6 and 8, so the biggest it could ever be is 8, and it can't even get there. So we can just substitute and say that 8 times the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon. So that's a direct substitution, um, but it's really an inequality because the absolute value of x plus 5 cannot be 8. It has to be less than 8. Um, okay, it's a good idea to keep track of that, though. Um, so this x plus 5, the absolute value of x plus 5 and 8 thing, that's going to come back, so keep track of that. But at this point, uh, we have these two things. So it seems pretty clear that we should let uh, delta equal epsilon over 8. But we also made that assumption, like what if delta equals 1? So what we're going to say in this case 
we're just going to say, uh, let delta be the minimum, so the smaller of 1 and epsilon over 8. So we need to keep that 1 involved so that the absolute value of x plus 5 is definitely less than 8. Um, and then, uh, but we pretty much know that epsilon over 8, because epsilon is a really tiny number because it's for all epsilon greater than 0. So typically you want epsilon to kind of tend towards 0. Epsilon over 8 is actually going to be smaller, but we need the 1 so that we can bound that absolute value of x plus 5. All right, I'm going to continue on a new page where I've copied essentially everything. Um, and let's do our proof. So the proof. Okay, all of these proofs start with given that epsilon is greater than zero. Do not forget that. And we're going to say let delta be this weird delta thing, right? It's the minimum of one and epsilon over eight. All right, so let's do our work. So uh, the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than delta implies that the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon over 8. Um, because we pretty much know that epsilon over 8 is smaller than 1, we're going to make use of that 1 when we um, do our kind of substitution back in. Uh, but this I'm going to multiply by 8. So at 8, the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon. So here's where we do something that's very strange. And if you've never done these, uh, it's, it's like a bizarre thing. But if you look back at our scrap work, we had the absolute value of x plus 5, and we actually replaced that with 8. And we were allowed to do that um, because we made that assumption. We said if delta equals 1, then we showed the absolute value of x plus 5 would be less than 8. But then you kind of say to yourself, well, what if um, delta equals epsilon over 8? Um, so if, if delta equals epsilon over 8, then we made that choice because epsilon over 8 is less than 1, right? Because delta is the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 8. So we know that that would be less than 1, which means the absolute value of x plus 5 is actually even uh, even less than 8 than the absolute value of x plus 5 is less than 8 if delta is 1. Uh, the inequality still holds. That's the idea. So what we can do is we can uh, make a new kind of transitive inequality. So I'm going to say the absolute value of x plus 5 times the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 8 times the absolute value of x minus 2, which we know is less than epsilon, which um, means that the absolute value of x plus 5 times the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon. Okay, so that's like a big step, um, and you have to like think about it uh, for a while and maybe uh, go back and try to work out the logic of it again on your own. I think that's a, a key sticking point in this, is like where does that absolute value of x plus 5 come back into uh, the scenario. So we have that. Uh, I'm just going to do some algebra now. So expand. We get this. Um, and then if you look back at our original work, we started off with the absolute value of x squared plus 3x minus 9 minus 1. So we just divide this up into that. It's always a good idea to look back at your work at that point to see like how should this end. Um, it should basically end where you began, which is kind of a weird thing with these. So we showed that if epsilon is greater than zero, so given epsilon greater than zero, and if we choose the minimum of one and epsilon over eight to be delta, then it's definitely the case that the absolute value of f of x minus one is less than epsilon. We prove that the limit is one. So I'm gonna say, therefore, the limit as x approaches two of x squared plus three x minus nine is actually equal to one, and we're done. All right. So. Uh, I definitely suggest that you try this again on your own, take a look at it. Um, it's really that step where you say like, what if delta equals one? That's that's like the weirdest part, but we have to do something to get rid of the absolute value of x plus five, because it's just like messing up our um, inequality that we want to set up. So we make that assumption, we do our work, and then we reverse the process. So I hope you found this helpful and good luck.